A very warm welcome to everyone attending our webinar today titled Why Are You Still Paying for Retired Application? Uh, it's the fourth and final series in highlighting topics of interest according to our customers and partners and today we'll be focusing on optimization. My name is Danny. I'll be assisting Daniel in the background this afternoon. Starting with a few things that I want to make you aware of, your phone lines or computer mics will be muted, but of course we do encourage you to ask any questions that you have. You can do that using the questions panel of GoToWebinar. We've scheduled the webinar for 30 minutes today. That includes a Q&A at the end of the presentation. And before handing it over to Daniel, I'll just briefly go through his agenda today. Uh, he'll be starting off with a summary of the past webinars in this series, moving on to uh, identify who's using what, when and how. On the flip side also though, what's not being used at all, how to keep track of what's being removed, and finally, what you need to pay attention to when removing server applications. And as I said at the end, a chat time for Q&A. So with that, I'll hand it over to Daniel. Perfect. Thank you very much, Danny, my name partner over there in Vienna. And uh, um, also a warm welcome to everybody. My name is Daniel. I'm the uh, technical director of the consulting team in the United States for uh, Panagenda. I'm uh, coordinating the consultants over here in the States, being a consultant myself for many, many years, working in the Notes and Domino um, and ICS portfolio area of IBM for about 17 years now, with a very strong client management focus in the past, but as you hopefully already know, um, with the Pan Agenda focus on being very targeted on analyzing ICS collaboration infrastructures, I'm certainly also doing these kind of things. Today, with the last series of the four series webinar, all about app strategies, modernization, migration, and optimization, I'd like to talk about something that has been more or less left out so far, which is about how to identify and then manage the removal of applications that are not longer used in your environment. So looking at the agenda, um, the first thing I'd like to do is quickly pointing out that there were these other three webinars in this four webinar series. Just in case this might be the first webinar you're attending in these series, I'd like to quickly point out what has happened over the past two months. Um, there was this webinar, Value Gained by Modernizing with Application Insights, where our CEO, Florian, was giving you a very good overview of what Pan Agenda Application Insights is and how you can use it, utilize it, to modernize your applications. Then we also had leveraging new technologies with migration, where Henning and Stefan were giving you ideas of across all the portfolio we have in Panagenda, how you can use our portfolio in your migration project when you possibly plan to move off Notes and Domino towards another target platform. And then we also had, uh, just about two weeks ago, what's next, shaping your IBM Domino app strategy, where Terry and Francie were uh, specifically talking about new features that were released in Panagenda Application Insights 1.5, which um, are, well, actually, personally, in my mind, really awesome as uh, we have usage um, built in where you can see, usage analysis built in where you can see department usage, so who is using what from which departments. We have um, custom insights where you can search through the whole code base that application, uh, application Insights was collecting. You can create your own queries, find things out. Um, so whenever something I just said kind of either, you know, lights a candle in your head and this sounds interesting, then please use these links. Go to our website, go to our YouTube channel, and um, look at these very nice webinars that were recently recorded. Now, Today's webinar, as said before, and I kind of plan on mentioning this over and over as it is really important, is about 
more or less one last piece in, um, in, in many different projects you might have, and that is finding out which applications in your Domino environment are not used by users, are not touched, are just, you know, occupying disk space. You can literally retire them, but the first challenge you would always have is to identify which ones are not used. That sounds a little bit easier than it is, but the Pen Agenda portfolio can certainly help you with that, and that's exactly what I'd like to point out. Now, this slide is basically talking about what solutions in our portfolio can really help you with identifying what you have in your infrastructure. On the server side, we have Pen Agenda Application Insights. The ones that I've highlighted in bold blue color will be the ones we will be talking about in this webinar, but I also want to point out what these solutions are about. I want to do that real briefly to then also jump over into a live demonstration on how you can figure out with Application Insights which apps aren't used at all. So Application Insights has a strong focus on apps and their design. In today's webinar, we will only be focusing on the usage part of um, AI. In all these other webinars, you can use them to figure out what else AI can provide for you. Also in the portfolio, there is our solution Panagenda iDNA. Some of you might have heard at least of the iDNA technology whenever the term IBM Domino Double Check was mentioned before. The reason why I'm mentioning it is the Panagenda iDNA technology, or you could call it the iDNA engine, is also used in the application insight solution as the collecting data engine. So technically in the background of AI, we still have a lot of iDNA running to collect from all these different data silos and store all the data in the SQL data warehouse that lives inside um, these software solutions. Both solutions, application insights and iDNA can help you with determining who is using what and with that also figuring out which apps are not used at all. I simply had to make a choice for today's webinar. I will go with AI. Um, at the end you will see a quick summary where I will again point out that both solutions can help you. It has to be discussed in more detail whether AI or iDNA would be a better fit um, for, your, for your project because at some point both solutions are going into a different direction where iDNA focuses more on infrastructure, AI is focusing on apps and their design. And there's a little overlap in the usage um, portion of these solutions. Panagenda Security Insider is something I'd like to briefly show you as well because this will help you with keeping track of what's removed in your environment besides many, many other amazing features. And then don't forget about a client side. Don't forget about you have um, all these notes clients that might be basic clients, rich clients that might even be ICAA, IBM Client Application Access, uh, where all these links, bookmarks, and workspace icons, and possibly local replicas from server-side applications you're planning on removing still reside. And I'd like to talk briefly about how we can help on this side. I'm starting off with um, Application Insights, uh, this is a slide that has been already explained in the other webinars, so I'm just going briefly over it so you understand Application Insights just like as iDNA is a virtual software appliance which you can uh, download from Panagenda. It is a turnkey appliance, so everything is included, including the operating system. We are uh, trusting on CentOS Linux, very stable and uh, Docker technology in uh, meanwhile, and um, the, the only thing you would need to do is deploy that image somewhere in your virtual platform environment, talking about VMware, vSphere, that can be VMware Workstation, even the VMware Player would be a good fit if you find a powerful uh, workstation or a laptop where you um, simply install VMware Player, you can deploy the image there and start it up, and the only thing that has to be done is configuring uh, the appliance on a network level, so assign it an IP address and uh, make sure that the appliance can reach your Domino servers on certain ports where most of all we're certainly talking about the port 1352 as 
inside the appliances, we're utilizing the API of uh, a Notes client or a Domino server to connect to your Domino servers. I was highlighting that AI visualizes application usage because that's the part we're focusing on uh, in this webinar. Now, before we jump over into a live demo, I'd like to point something out as also really important. When our appliances start to collect data, we are in a situation where by default, so that's, that's an IBM Domino default, there is not much history data that we can collect. IBM Domino servers, by default, only store seven days of historical data. Um, and I'm, with that data, I'm talking about usage information, so who was touching which databases, how many reads and writes were happening on certain applications on certain servers. So when our appliances are started up, they collect from the day on where you configure the appliances. And if you have these appliances running for, let's say, about the first seven days, talking about the first week, they have collected usage information, usage data, and usage records for the first seven weeks. Now, if you pictureize that and you look at the upper right picture here, that is how we um, picture the usage information we can collect from your Domino servers. And that's just one example. We call that the very famous bubble chart that has been around for approximately um, over 10 years already. And um, every bubble you see here is a database on a certain server. And there's more information about every single bubble. It's actually at least four infos at the same time you see on one of these slides here. One bubble is a database instance on a specific server. The size of the bubble is giving you information about how many distinct users have been touching this database, have been working with this database. And then the location of the bubble on the grid is additionally telling you how many reads and writes were happening in this database. So the x-axis down here is um, displaying the data that was read from a database. So we're talking about downloading data. And the y-axis is talking about how many data was written into the database. So talking about uploading. And um, the, the, the key about this slide right now here is it would be, I would rather want to say, almost dangerous to only look at a data collection that happened for about one week only, especially if it comes to determining what's not used. Because if you would look at all the databases that haven't been used within one week of data collection, I would even say that most of your applications would show up as not being used. Hence, if you look at the lower right bottom picture, that is the same environment where data was collected over a period of six continuous months, six months in a row. Um, and as you can see, there are a lot of more bubbles. Applications, so database types of applications, are actually shown in red. And you can specifically see how many more red bubbles are showing up here. So here's a recommendation, which I strongly suggest at least collecting three months of data is key to figure out something like applications that are not used at all. Ongoing is always key. It's the best idea you can have. So if we talk about large environments where you could really possibly have the situations that quite a lot of people might be on a vacation. People might be on maternity leave. People hence might not touch applications every single day. And then there might also be applications that are super important but are only touched once a month anyway. You would not get them into this whole equation if you're not collecting data long enough. Now, jumping over into a live demo of Application Insights and how Application Insights can help you with identifying usage. I'm going over into a live demo, so fingers crossed that the system will not break down on me here. We are looking at the status dashboard that comes up when you log into the Application Insights appliance. As you can see, you use your web browser to do that. And I want to specifically focus on what you see right here in the middle. The focus of Application Insights is on database types of applications and mail-in databases. 
all the other databases in AI are called other DBs. So everything that's in gray here are other DBs. We don't want to focus on other DBs for now, so I'm going to hide that in the chart. And the first thing we notice is exactly what I was just talking about. You see 238 databases have been used over the last seven days. If we jump over to the next category, which is databases used within the last 30 days, you see already a difference of 40, about 40 databases. So if you would have only collected for seven days, you would have missed out on 40 databases already that have not been used within the first seven days. And to make this picture even, I don't want to say worse, but let's go with worse for now, as if you would not have looked at it, it would really be worse. If we go up to three months, 90 days, you would have missed another 60 databases. So overall, we're talking about 100 databases approximately that would have been missed when you would only collect data for seven days. That's how important it is to collect for a longer period of time. However, what we really want to focus on today will be the very far left category here. 101 applications have never been used according to this information here. And I can tell you that this appliance is collecting data for a little more than 12 months already. Now, in the application insights user interface, you will see a category that is called usage on the far left side. And what you've just seen on the static slide before were these famous bubble charts. Now, these are the ones you can also have in AI. Here's an example. So um, this is the famous bubble chart. Every bubble is a database. If you hover over a bubble, you can see detailed information about which database it is, on which server it resides. And as said before, the size of the bubble is the amount of distinct users that have been touching this database. And then we're also giving you some technical insights about data that has been read, uh, read and written out of and into this database. However, the focus of this webinar is not exactly um, showing at what's used, but we want to show at the opposite. So there is also another thing in AI, which is called the catalog. The catalog lists every single database and their details in a list view, and actually in many different list views. So we can choose from many different column presets to get to the information that is required. I'm just quickly going to an example of one specific database that we have in here that's a, a CRM database. Here is a tab which is called usage and then you get all different sorts of usage information about this database um, like uh, how many times it was used over the past 7, 30, 90 days and so on. So basically a single instance as opposed to what you saw on the dashboard in front. And um, we also tell you about session characteristics, how many reads and writes were happening only on that certain database. And this is the new feature that was introduced with Application Insights 1.5, where we get down to department usage if you want. So you can figure out how many people from a sales department, a consulting department, uh, from the whole organization have been touching the database and in what way. So, key of this webinar will be that we're now inverting this picture. We want to know what's not used at all. And for that, I'd like to demo how you can identify unused applications within Application Insights. So we're jumping over again into AI and into the catalog. And um, this is almost like a little bit of a training. So if you have AI running and you might have already collected some sort of data over the past couple of weeks or maybe months, um, feel free to do this exercise after um, you watch this webinar. When you access the catalog, we have what, what I call column presets in the far right uh, upper corner here. And I'd like to switch over to what's called the column usage, the column preset usage. One column in here is um, specifically interesting to me. It's called the sessions client all, which is the combination of all rich client sessions that occurred on certain databases and combined and summarized with all the web sessions that also happen. So whenever someone is accessing a database with a web browser, that is also counted into this column. Now the columns are sortable. If you click on them, um, you can 
uh, sort them. I'm clicking on this one twice because what I want is that all the ones that have no sessions at all are coming to the top. Now you might notice that somewhere here the catalog now tells you it's showing 278 databases. We recognized in the status dashboard that we have 101 databases that are have never been used in the data collection period. This is giving you additional filter uh, functionality in the AI catalog. And what I want to do is in this column, which is interesting to me, I only want the catalog to show all the databases that have zero combined sessions from web browser clients and rich clients. And if I do that, you now notice we actually went down to exactly these 101 databases we saw in the middle of the dashboard. And one of the next thing that you might want to do is you want to get this list exported. So with AI 1.5, we have another feature introduced, which is the possibility of exporting whatever the catalog shows. So I'm saving an Excel sheet locally onto my client. I can open that. Um, sheet because you you might want to you know discuss that with your manager or with your with the rest of your team and now this doesn't really need much explanation you can use the power of Excel to um, utilize whatever is in here so for instance you could make the first column here a filterable column and if you're only interested in seeing all the databases that have not been used on a certain server you can filter by it and then discuss what this list is all about. Now this is how actually how easy it is to identify unused applications with application insights. It's more or less an out-of-the-box feature. If you want to get more information on application insights, here's a very good slide as is also shown in others in, in other webinars that um, is pointing you to other recordings where you can get more details about what else you can do with AI. And um, if you might ask the question how you can get application insights, uh, here's a very good overview slide telling you about the fact that application insights uh, is um, an IBM entitlement. So if you are on active IBM maintenance, you can get it through IBM. Uh, how to do that is explained in a tech note you can see up here on the slide. And if you appear or happen to be a customer that is not on active uh, IBM maintenance in the ICS portfolio, um, that of course is not a showstopper, please uh, go to our website, penagenda.com slash application insights or contact Penagenda over basically any given email address you know. The sales team of course is happy to receive your inquiry and then talk to us about uh, getting a trial and um, a trial license to have a first look at your um, uh, infrastructure. Now, that's not it, right? It's, it's nice to find out what's not used, but there are next steps involved which you should think about. The first thing, and I'm picturing uh, maybe a larger environment here, where you might figure out that hundreds, if not thousands of applications in the environment is, are not used at all, um, a team might figure that out with AI or with iDNA, and then they start removing these applications. Now, it would be a bummer if nobody keeps track of what was actually removed. And doing that in an automated way would literally be a great idea. So I want to jump over into explaining another solution in the Panagenda portfolio, which is Panagenda Security Insider. Security Insider, uh, technically, is uh, it's not an appliance. It's, an, it's a Domino database. So it's an application from Panagenda you would put on a server. And there is a very powerful Java agent in there that can run on a frequent schedule and will scan your Domino servers, but with a completely different focus. Security Insider is focusing on things like groups and users and group membership of these users, especially interesting if you have nested group structures. So in the end, you want to find out how does a user gain access to a certain application that might be through a very com com complex uh, group structure and what in the end is the effective access a user might have. But Security Insider is also more. Our current and latest version has so many new features, it would probably take me an hour to explain them all. So focusing on today's webinar topic, there is one feature 
that is really interesting to mention, and that is Security Insider also keeps track of changes. And that's not only group changes, like if users are added to groups or removed from groups, are added to database ACLs or removed from database ACLs. Security Insider can also keep track of what files you are removing from your Domino service, speaking of applications. So I like to give you a very brief glance of Security Insider, um, and if you want to have more insights on what that whole solution is all about, please feel free and contact us. So I'm going over into my notes client where I have a Security Insider database up and running, and um, we're now looking at a full scan of the Panagenda Domino directory. Right now we're looking at the, the group view, so this is basically um, that those are all the groups you would also see in the Domino directory. This is how it looks like if you open a group document. There are very nice features in SI um, we call, for instance, group maps. So if you want to know all about this group with the name of all and how this group correlates with other groups, so um, is the all group part and members of other uh, child groups, and how does this picture in the end really look like, it's pretty hard to find out if you just have the dominant directory in front of you and a full text search, because you would need to fire a lot of full text searches actually to get to something like this. And then again, there is no graphical way of displaying something like that. But I need to be careful not to be, you know, carried away um, with how amazing Security Insider is in uh, terms of visualizing data and telling you how users gain access. We want to focus on how Security Insider keeps track of changes that are happening in your environment. Now, there are certain views, and I want to point out one specific view here, where between each scan, Security Insider would also tell you about which databases have been removed compared to the prior run of the Security Insider agent. So right now, we're, we're seeing an overview that 40 databases on the Cronus server have been removed. And here is one very important information, part of what we're looking at. You're noticing that every single database has an entry, not only telling you about the title of this database, not only telling you about the file path and the name of the file, but also the replica ID. And this replica ID can be specifically important when we look at basically the last topic um, we want to talk about in this today's webinar, because there is something else. There are the clients. There are the notes clients on your user's workstations and laptops that are still having links as um, in, in terms of bookmarks on the left side of the bookmark bar. We all know that. We've been working with notes for years. And then there's also the workspace, sometimes called the desktop, inside notes where you see all the, the little tiles um, which are in, in my world are called the workspace icons and they're also pointing to possibly applications that you have possibly removed from your Domino servers because you figured out they're not used at all. We have solutions that integrate with each other where you can completely automate the removal of these links. And there's also one more thing to think about when it comes to removing something on the client side, and that is local replicas of applications. Because the question is, if you remove server-side applications that have never been used, do you really want to keep local replicas that also possibly exist on the client side? They're probably and likely also not used on the client side, so they're just occupying disk space. They're orphaned because they can't be replicated with something anymore on the server side. So we have Panagenda Marble Client. Marble Client is the leading client management solution on the market, and it is module-based. And Marble Client has a module that is called Marble Client Automate. And Automate can use informations that are analyzed and read by Security Insider. And that is where the integration comes into play. When Security Insider figures out that applications have been removed on the server side. Marvel Client can use this information to automatically remove everything that might be living on the client side, which is not no, long, no longer necessary. So we can remove workspace icons, bookmarks, and even physically local replicas that live on the notes client side. 
with that you free gigabytes if not terabytes on the local clients um, you potentially reduce the, the future backup size if you do client backups and of course most of all you um, probably spare the help desk a lot of time with figuring out why is this user now calling about something that apparently doesn't work any longer. There's another module in Marvel Client, it's called the Analyze module. I really love to point out there is a free version of Marvel Client Analyze that's free for a complete year. So if you, first of all, simply want to figure out um, how your notes client infrastructure looks like, please contact us. You can get the Marvel Client Analyze module for free for one year and um, that will give you a central view of basically all the settings and all the different states of your notes clients in a Domino database application we call the um, Marvel Client Analyze application and parts of this Analyze application would show you for every single client and user who's using a client which links do still exist on the client side. So what you see on the right side of the screen here in the screenshot is a part where um, we point out all the desktop icons that live on certain clients pointing to certain databases on a certain server. So there is no better way to keep track of whether Marvel Client Automate was successful with removing everything on the client side. There are other views about local databases as well, so you will also get centrally reported that um, uh, local databases exist on the, on the notes client side and of course also you won't see them any longer if they're successfully removed. To summarize all of that, with Panagenda Application Insights or iDNA, you can use these solutions to determine the unused applications that are available to be retired, to be sunset basically. We're certainly and in most cases wouldn't talk about deleting them, but you can move them over to um, an archive server to a backup, for instance. Um, but you can definitely physically remove them out of the scope of your production domino servers. Then there's Panagenda Security Insider, which you can use to automatically keep track of all the applications that you remove from your production servers. With Marva Client Automate, you can use that to automate the removal of the links and also the local replicas that still live in the notes clients. And then last but not least, and that would be even more of a thing you can also start with. So that's not a specific order you have to keep when looking at the summary. There's Marble Client Analyze, available for free for a year, which you can use to get your central overview of who has what locally on the notes clients and then follow the progress of removals, which was this whole topic about today's webinar. So at that point, I really like to thank you all for joining and um, we're now open for questions and answers. Fantastic, thank you Daniel. We are unfortunately already a bit over the time but there's been many questions which I've tried to group together into just a few that I'd like to cover because I think they are very important for the audience. Um, the first is, I'm just going to read it as, it's, as I've rewritten it. How exactly does Application Insights determine usage of databases? Yes, okay. So, um, pretty briefly explained what Application Insights as well as iDNA does. It is collecting data from certain data containers that live on a Domino server. When it comes to usage, that would be the log NSF. So a mandatory thing to enable, although it is enabled in most customer environments anyway, will be to turn on session logging. So um, Application Insights or iDNA would be able to determine for every single user who's creating a session on which database that session happened and how many bytes were read and written out of and into this database. That is for rich client usage. On top of that, I'd like to mention we are not relying on something that's impacting the server performance because we all know there's a feature called uh, Domino Activity Logging, uh, which in my opinion actually impacts the performance of Domino servers. So that's not necessary. You simply have to enable something that is probably already enabled anyway, and then we get the usage information from the Domino Log NSF. But I also don't want to miss 
on uh, quickly explaining that is rich client usage. We can also report on web usage, which can be a pretty important part because in many companies, Domino applications are web enabled and this information, who's using what through a web browser client is not living in the Domino service log NSF, but it can live in another log database that's usually called the DOM log NSF. So either that has to be turned on or if customers choose to um, use flat files that um, are written locally on a server's hard disk to store information about web usage. AI and also iDNA, both solutions are capable of collecting these files from the Domino service to process their content and figure out who's using what with a web browser client. All right, very good. The, the next question came in a variation from both Lucy and, and Joshua, so I'm just going to read one of those. Is it really necessary to remove links in the eNotes client? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, me being a client guy, my answer would be yes, absolutely, because an, an, an ultimate goal should be always to reduce help desk calls. With that, you have more time to focus on more important things. And we all know administrators um, can be super overwhelmed these days because they have so many different tasks focusing on all these different systems. So not getting a call um, is usually a good thing. And the reason why I'm saying that is if you keep links, speaking of bookmarks and, and workspace icons in your notes clients that are still pointing to something that doesn't longer exist, can create these kind of issues. At some point the users might click on them and they will get a weird error message they don't understand so they call the admins, they call the help desk and want to know what that is. It takes time, it costs time and that can be super easily avoided by following up with removing links that's pointing to stuff that doesn't longer um, exist. That's how I would describe it. Okay, and before moving on to the last question, I'm just going to jump back one. Um, the question was, will W3C file-based web usage include, is it, is it included in the price for, of AI? Yes, absolutely. Very good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and with that, the last question from yet another Daniel, so there's three of us on the call today. Um, is Security Insider required for Marvel Client to manage links in notes? Okay, also here, um, the honest answer would be no. Um, the only reason why I would highly recommend Security Insider in the combination here is because of automation keeping track of hundreds if not thousands of applications being removed, so keeping track of all these changes manually is pretty much an impossible task. And Security Insider can help with keeping track of all those things automatically. And with that, we are um, super easily capable of passing that information automatically to Marva Client where this can be um, used to then automate, you know, these Marvel client actions that are removing the links um, on the notes client sites automatically. And speaking of automation in that case really means there is nothing to take care of. Once it is configured and set up, these things will happen completely automatically. The next time the users start their notes clients, we will browse through all these links. We are super fast with that. We can do up to 15,000 of these changes per second. So there's literally no delay in the notes client start. The user won't notice anything. We had projects where you would, if you would combine all these changes that we did on the notes client side, we were, we're talking of billions of changes that were happening on the next day when the, when the users were starting their clients. Um, so I would rather say we're really good at that. And um, you can spend, or not spend, you can actually save a lot of time by doing that. All right, so I hope that uh, answers your question also, third Daniel in this webinar. With that, we're already quite a bit over our allocated time. Uh, there's a few more questions that I didn't get to, but we'll make sure to answer those in a follow-up email um, in the next few days. Um, just to let you also know that today's webinar was recorded, will be shared on our webinar page, which uh, Daniel showed you guys earlier, the link to which will also be sent out in a general follow-up email. 
Uh, with that, I'd like to thank everyone for attending and remind you also that there's two more webinars coming up uh, before the end of the year uh, that is in our Social Connections 12 series. The next is Reboot 2.0 focusing on digital transformation journeys. That's on the 6th of December with Luis Suarez. And on that webinar page, you will also find uh, the recordings and any upcoming webinars. Okay, so Daniel, I'll give you the last word and then I will end the webinar for today. Great, I simply wanna also thank you all very much for joining. I appreciate your time and I'm really looking forward to discussing any of the questions that we couldn't get to today. So thank you very much and have a wonderful rest of the week.